another episode of It's Never Too Late, where we believe it's never too late to have some fun, start something new. Fun, yeah. Or follow your dreams. Yeah, this is the big guy for fun. Well, before we go any further, we have to send a big thank you to all those great people on Chickatee Island in Virginia. They made our stay so wonderful. We can't wait to go back again. Yes, there's Evelyn at the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much because she put us in touch with Bryce at the museum and Bryce was kind enough to give us a personal tour last week. I think that was his day off. Too. It was his day off. It was, I think. So a, thank you very much. That we was really a, do appreciate that. That was extra special. And of course, Captain Randy. Who Captain us, Randy. Oh, How could you forget Captain Randy? Great oh. boat ride. His stories were fabulous. Yeah, because he's a lifelong resident there and his parents and his grandparents. So if anybody knows the island, he does. And we were lucky enough to see the famous Riptide. Yeah. He's a stud of the island. Yeah, it was very cool. So today, you mentioned last week. How I got to eat. Got to eat. So, <laughs> <laughs> surprise. <laughs> so, so one of our favorite places to eat is Macha Pongo Clam see, Shack. See, that's why I'm Phoebe wearing got this. The shirt. Hey, great Macha Pongo Clam Shack. And it really is great seafood. It's on Route 13 on the way towards the uh, Chesapeake Bay Bridge. And we're going to take you yes. there right now. at the Great Machapongo Clam Shack, Which is one of our favorite stops to eat. And you know how much I like eating. Yeah, and we always stop here when we're on our way south on Route 13, going towards the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, coming up next. And we're here with Linda, who's the assistant manager of the Great Machapongo Clam Shack. And you've been here how many years? 11. 11 years. And tell us about years. the menu and tell us about your favorite foods here. But we have a wide variety of seafood. You can get it broiled or fried. They do all the prep work, everything is fresh cooked. It's amazing. It is, and their hush puppies are amazing. You always get those to store it. That's my favorite thing. I think about those. And I like the fried oysters myself. Yeah, now, that's, awesome. that's the oyster poor boy? Oyster poor boy. Oyster poor boy. boy, that's probably what you're going to get. I like the crab cakes. I also oh, am thinking about too, getting yeah. that flounder sandwich because that sounds good. I have another question. Do you still uh, ship seafood? Do up and down the East Coast. Okay. So you can come here, you can call in, and they'll send you whatever you like. Right? Right. That's great. <laughs> what a great place. The Delmarva Peninsula is the aquaculture capital for, for shellfish, for oysters and clams. We produce more oysters and clams here than anywhere in the country. Mainly because we have the most pristine waters. Right. We were just in the museum at um, Chickatee Island. Yeah. Uh, we've been trying to get into the museum. Every time we get there, it's closed. So he, she ends up calling the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Okay. And the lady was very nice over there. And turns out the guy who actually runs the museum was going to be there today. Of all days, on my birthday. Oh, okay. We got oh, to see birthday. the inside of the museum. And we saw Misty and uh stormy stormy yes oh cool they had them both mounted there and oh, wonderful. uh it was a fan they had oysters that's what brings it to mind and they had some oyster shells in there that were this big he said those were very old yeah because they can just continue to grow yes so we're learning a lot about oysters and mm -hmm. clams. you're gonna learn how to get some in your belly soon i put them in my belly <laughs> <laughs> cool. yeah everybody's yeah. gotta eat everybody's gotta eat <laughs> <laughs> got so it. served 
our great matcha pango meal, and you got the what? Oyster poi boys? I got the oyster poi boy. Let's, let's see, see what let's it looks see, like. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, hush puppies, hush sweet puppy. potato fries, coleslaw. I think they make that here, don't they? I think so. Wow. Wow, that looks great. Let me see what I got. I got the flounder. Oh, yes. Oh, look at the size of that piece of flounder. Holy mackerel. My, and that's just my, I've been thinking about those. Hush puppies. Oh, hush mm. puppies for a long time. All right, gotta go. Eat. Oh, I'm, I'm, what? Feeling, yep. I'm feeling a french fry. A sweet potato fry. Mmm, sweet potato fry. Mmm. Yum. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can, you can, no, you can't have my hush puppy. These are amazing. These yes, are amazing. they are. Yes. Hush puppies. Well. Oyster, fried oyster, poor boy. Mm. <laughs> That's good. Oh, look how sweet. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to my wonderful husband, Curtis. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Oh, that so is much. so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> See why we love this place? <laughs> Little things like that. So that one's Smith Island Reese's cake. And this one is Smith Island Key Lime. Oh, oh Key Lime. She loves Key Lime. I love Key Lime. And this is called what? Smith Island Reese's cake. Reese's, which oh. means it's like peanut butter and chocolate, which right. is his absolute Yeah, favorite. there's Reese's on top. Yeah, Reese's on top. Oh, that's beautiful. No, you haven't the finished Smith your... Island cakes are made local. <laughs> They're made by Becca. Uh -huh. Look, pieces, pieces on top. Multi-layer cakes. And they're awesome. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> Look at uh, that. <laughs> mm, mm. Uh, you got to finish you your lunch first. You have to wait. First. I have to finish eating so I can get yelled at. <laughs> well, happy birthday. Thank you so they, much. Okay, right now they have all these cool picnic tables. And you can eat outside on a beautiful sunny day and enjoy the fish and the hush puppies. The hush puppies are the best. <laughs> when I'm cruising past the ocean as it licks the seashore, I'm swimming with the dolphins and jumping across the waves. I've just become a part of all. Pongo told us to come down here to the town of Oyster. The water is really clean over here, and this is where they raise oysters. Look how beautiful that water is. <sighs> I feel better. Of course. He just ate. Well, my belly's full. I feel better when my belly's full. Mm. It helps me sleep, too. <laughs> well, we're not sleeping now. Tell them where oh, we're going. Oh, no. We're going to go on a great ride. We're going to take the Chesapeake Bay Tunnel Bridge. It's 17 miles long. It's got two sections of tunnel and three sections of bridge. And you're right above the water. It's just, you know, it's a beautiful sunny day. We couldn't ask for better conditions. No, and we had the GoPro already. We thought we're going to get some great footage for you to see as we're going oh, yeah. on, the, on the bridge, on, in the tunnel, on the bridge, on the tunnel, on the bridge. It's, it's fabulous. You feel like you're, you're right in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay and it feels like you're riding right on top of the water. So... Here we were, we had the GoPro ready, a sunny day, and we take the footage, and later on we check the footage, and... What do we find? There's a smudge in the middle of every... Smudge? It's a bug! It was a bug, it got smushed on the lens, and we didn't see it before we left. Well, you kept the footage anyway, so... I have to show you. <laughs> you'll get to see some of it, and you'll get to see the smudge. You'll get to know we're not perfect, especially at tech stuff, but we have the perfect song 
to to go under this video. Yes, and I sing back up in that song. He does. The song's called Bugs. <laughs> we wrote it. Very appropriate. It's a great song. <laughs> so enjoy. I hate bugs a whole lot. A real lot, not a little. They suck them through my nostrils and I shoot them out in my spittle. I breathe them in and cough them out or chew them for a snack. On a bike for sure, there's always more bugs. There ain't no lack. Just so gross, I squeeze under my glasses They buzz around my eyeball and dance upon my lashes They'll crawl under my helmet and they're buzzing around my ear I scream and yell from that itchy scalp and I mush them in my hair I get bugs a whole lot, a real lot, not a little They suck in through my nostrils and I shoot them out in my spittle And that's why we hate bugs. Just one of the many reasons we hate bugs. Do you remember the time? In Florida, love bug mating season. Oh my gosh, I think it was in October? Yeah, I think it was October. Bugs, I... you could see them coming, the swarms. We pulled over into a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's car was covered with bugs. So that was the worst one. We had to like duck behind our windshield. We were getting pelted. We had it on our hands, our legs. That was that was really something. I don't ever mm. want to have to do that again. But No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so after we did the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Wait a minute. What? Spe speaking of what? bugs. What? If you ride with your mouth open, you can pick up a little extra protein. Oh, yuck. <laughs> okay, stick in the back of your throat. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, after the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, we headed to Kitty, Ca Kitty Hawk, North Carolina to see the Wright Brothers Museum. The place where the first flight took place. I am so excited to be here at the Wright Brothers Museum in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. They first took off in flight. In the spot, we're going to get to see all around. You get to walk around outside. And I just got my senior pass for every national park in the United States. $20 if you're over 62. Get this you're looking at an exact replica of the original plane that Orville and Wilbur Wright flew for the very first time in human history. That's the first plane to ever take flight. Isn't that amazing? Look at the motor on that thing. Look at that. Ain't that something? With those two propellers in the back. And a solid wood. And that's how they rode it, lying down. And all they saw was blue skies ahead. Look at that. They had to invent propellers. They didn't exist. Orville and Wilbur didn't believe in a long commute to their workshop, which you see there. Right here, where their handsome man is, it was where they lived. This was actually their original hangar, and they lived in a tent. And they decided they needed a bigger hangar to work. Well, this is where they lived and worked. They had hammocks up there and the rafters. as a ladder to get to it. There's a workshop. So this is the very spot. The first flight took place. There were four flights. Wilbur and Orville took turns. And then by that big stone down there is where they took off. Their first flight went to number one. Their second flight went to number two. Their third flight went to number three. And the fourth flight, get ready for this, all the way down there. It took 59 seconds to get from where they took off to their furthest spot. I believe that was 859 feet. 59 seconds must have been the most exciting minute in his life. Look at this, 120 feet, the first flight from this boulder. This is where they started, the exact spot where they took off and the first flight went to that first stone. Walking the path of the first flight in history. And 120 feet later is where they got to, right here. 
12 seconds, 120 feet. December 17, 1903, pilot, Orville. Orville. Second flight took the same amount of time, was it? 12 seconds? 12 seconds, a distance of 175 feet, December 17, 1903, by pilot Wilbur. Oh, he did the second one. Okay. Yes. Who do you think did the third flight? I don't know. Who did the, the third one? Oh, they took turns. Pilot Orville. Uh, they took turns. Boy, those brothers got along good, didn't they? <laughs> and the third flight, 15 seconds, 200 feet. My brothers yeah. flew this path. I'm walking it? What, are we crazy? <laughs> Where's my wings? We need the exercise. Are you kidding? What after are you trying to say? After Now look, she's telling me I'm, I'm fat. No, I'm saying I hear you. my chaps are getting real tight. Uh-huh. Oh, you're fat too. Yeah, celebrating oh. your birthday. So you oh, yeah, off. wasn't that fun? Yeah, but you know what? Oh. We were eating like that before your birthday. Yeah, well, we celebrate the whole month, don't we? <laughs> For your birthday, we do. And then sure. it will be my birthday. We can start all over again. Yeah. So we just go right from my birthday to your birthday. Uh-huh. But we don't have to worry about it. There we go. And we are almost at the 852-foot marker. Just imagine standing here in the field, looking up in the sky, and watching them fly. Where is he going to come down? I hope before those bushes. Those bushes weren't here. They, I don't think so. No, no, I don't think they're old enough. Uh-uh. No. It's really amazing when you think about it. It only took 40 feet to get off the ground. Amazing to see that when you're standing here at the place of the first flight in history. That plane that just flew over wouldn't have been possible without the Wright brothers. That's why history is so important, to find out all these things, how things started, where they developed. Look at that. It's just amazing. We have rockets that go up in space, all because two brothers took those first four flights. And like it says inside, believe and keep going, keep going, keep going, because it's never too late. To follow your dreams. And that's exactly what the Wright brothers did. So now we're going to take a walk up Kill to... Kill Devil Hill. Is that big Kill Devil Hill right there where the monument is used to be all sand. The Wright brothers used to carry their gliders all the way up to the top and do experiments with the gliders. And they'd fly it down and that's how it started. It actually started with kites. Imagine this whole area here was beach, was sand. And you can see how close the ocean is. This was all beach. And I love the inscription, achieved by dauntless resolution and unconquerable faith. Wilbur Wright said that he did not think they would be able to do it. He said, man's not going to fly for another 50 years. Little did he know that 66 years later, man would be on the moon, in large part because of what he and his brother did. Give the chills being here. Yes, we walked up that hill. Piece of cake. I'm in such good shape. <laughs> yeah, all right. And then there's an airfield over here. And I wanted to get you in that biplane. I know. That would have been fun. We could have no. taken a flight for 25 bucks. No, not doing it. Oh, not doing maybe it. Maybe next time. I'll go. All I know is this is a really cool place. We met some great people while we were here. And it's just being a part of history. I mean, you feel like you're a part of the history. One windy ride coming off the Outer Banks. A lot of white caps. They're expecting possible storms later. So we're riding off the Outer Banks. And we were going to take the ferries, because that's nice when you take the ferries around the Outer Banks. But they're expecting some thunderstorms, and that can get a little rough around Cape Hatteras. So we decided we'll ride. Well, let me tell you something. If the Chesapeake had winds, it was nothing compared to these winds getting off the Outer Banks. This kind of gives you a little idea of what it was like. Yeah, it's still tight. fun. It's still fun, but we had... Explosion it. sideways. <laughs> That's not so it's fun. It's exciting. <laughs> it's all part of the riding experience. Yeah, so we're going to take a little break, get a cup of tea or coffee, and... Uh... I want to eat again. Oh, my gosh. I like to eat. <laughs> we know that. 
<laughs> but we're gassing up now, and I think we've passed the uh, the worst of the winds for now, and um, we're on our way. We thought once we got off the Outer Banks, the wind would stop. You go over those bridges, it's super windy. If you've ever ridden a motorcycle in the wind with headwinds and crosswinds, it takes a lot of energy because you're steadying the bike. Oh, some crosswinds, they push it sideways. Oh my Terrible. gosh, and you have to leave more room in between us, so he has wiggle room and I have wiggle room. Well, we get off the Outer Banks and we think, okay, now it's going to be easier. No. <laughs> we, Too much farmland around. There was windstorms. We saw dust up in the air, like in the, into the clouds. It was amazing. It, it was really something. It took a lot of energy to do that. And then with all the dust blowing around every now and then, you'd start <laughs> from the dust. At least I did. I don't know if you did. I had yeah, to stop and get a little water. It wasn't water. that bad. It was a little more challenging than normal. It was. But uh, we got through it. We did a little, a little over 300 miles, and wow. uh, we were tired after that. So uh, we were definitely tired after that. So we slept great last night, and today we are on our way to Charleston, Charleston South Carolina, one yeah. of our favorite cities. Can't Absolutely. wait. See you there. So here we are at the McLeod. Plantation in South Carolina. Check this out. Look at the trees here. It's beautiful. What a <laughs> gorgeous sunny day. I think you're getting a little over dramatic there, buddy. All right, all right. But still, we're going to have so much fun in here. <laughs> this is what the old South was like. All, these live oak all trees the live oaks. Green, the Spanish moss hanging off. Just beautiful. This tree has been here since the Civil War. That's the mansion. We're going to go in now. They had two parlors when you walk in, one on the left and one on the right. There's one of the other parlors on the first floor. I believe this to be a dining room. Could be. A chandelier. <laughs> Missing my corn cob pipe right here about now. So right now there's only 30 something acres left, but at one time there were 1,700 acres here. 1,700 acres. And most of the time it was uh, held by the troops during the Civil War. The family that originally owned it wasn't here that long. And that's the outside of the slave quarters, one of them. Inside one of the quarters where slaves would live. It's quite small. And this is the well. This is how they got their water out of here. No running water. These trees lined up like this is a sign of wealth. However, the McLeod family never reached wealthy. They were upper middle class. But their grandsons wanted to look like they had the wealth, and they put these trees in. A few years ago, we went to see some plantations. We saw Middleton Plantation, exquisite gardens. We went to see Boone Hall Plantation, amazing place. So today we came to see McLeod Plantation. What'd you think? A little disappointing. A little disappointing, really. They are now left with only 37 acres. They had almost 1,700 in their heyday. And the house is very, very tiny. It only has four, maybe five little rooms in the bottom. They're not furnished. So you don't really get a feel of what it was like back then. In this, during the Civil War. It has some history. The McLeods only lived there for a couple of years, maybe a year before the Confederates moved in. In 1865, the uh, Union soldiers moved in, and uh, there's some history about the slaves and the freedmen trying to get the property back. Eventually, it went back to the original McLeod family, to the grandchildren. So there is some history here. <laughs> it's not on our favorite list. No. No. Anyway, we did come see it, and... On to Savannah. Bye. 
my way And though you'll be arriving for me I'll take my time meeting folk of like mind On the bonny, bonny journey of for me Thank you for joining us for another episode of It's Never Too Late, where we believe it's never too late to have some fun, to start something new, or to follow your dreams. Especially the fun, right? Don't forget the fun and laugh. <laughs> Always laugh. But right now, we have to give a special thanks to those folks over at Macho Pongo Clam Shack, Roger, Linda, and Jane. Thank you very much. You made my birthday something to remember. It was very special. I don't know how you knew... Maureen loved key lime pie, and I was nuts for chocolate and peanut butter, but it worked out perfectly, and it'll be a birthday I'll always remember. Thanks again. You guys are great. And next week, we're going to be going to Savannah, Georgia, so we hope you're going to join us. And remember, in the meantime, say yes to every opportunity. He taught have me that. Have fun. <laughs> and have fun. And laugh. <laughs> and laugh. God bless. Bye-bye. There was a dream, such a dream, just a staring at me. I will